Uh, Jonathan mentioned this morning that uh, Fanon's uh, um, was trained as a psychiatric doctor and uh, Fanon practiced as a psychiatric doctor at the uh, Blida Hospital. Um, um, from, I think, uh, 1953 up to uh, 1956, uh, just as the uh, Battle of Algiers was basically uh, uh, coming to an end. Um, Fanon wrote uh, um, a piece in uh, um, Studies in Dying Colonialism, and the title of the piece, Medicine and Colonialism. And uh, I found that piece very, very unconvincing. Uh, uh, it sits really um, not uh, uh, um, organically with the, um, the four topics that he was uh, uh, discussing. He was talking. He was talking about the impact of the Algerian War on the uh, family structure. He was talking also. Uh, uh, the second chapter focuses on on what he calls the historical dynamism of the veil. And um, he talks about um, the radio, and he talks about medicine, and he concludes by uh, uh, engaging the liberal left and the uh, uh, European minority. And to be honest with you, he was trying to uh, uh, um, um, rally the uh, uh, the uh, liberal left to the Algerian cause, um, and that, that that piece is also you know kind of you know, uh, a little bit controversial uh, in that uh, the liberal left in France was basically moving to the extreme right, and basically they were supporting the uh, the colonial uh, 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 colonialism, whereas there was a minority, a Jewish minority. Uh, uh, supporting the the uh, uh, the Algerian cause, and he is trying to beat the Algerian liberal left, mainly led by the Jews, and you know against the uh, the French liberal left that basically did not want to support the Algerian cause. Um, most of the discussion really is just basically it kind of you know it's like you know kind of you know uh, West West Indians and Africans before. In the kind of you know, the war, the situation was this, but after the war, you know, you've got a completely different uh, uh, dynamism. For example, the French language in black skin, white mask was uh, a, a colonial tool. Um, in his discussion uh, 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 about the radio, French uh, was employed as a tool to fight colonialism in the same way as the, the radio. Um, the veil also, you know, kind of became a bone of uh, contention, and basically, kind of, you know, the veil became uh, 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 gender became uh, 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 an issue, and that relates really to to his discussion of the family structure. I really do not want to get bogged down in the, in the, in the, uh, in a detailed discussion of this, but his discussion in medicine and colonialism really rings hollow because you know he's making two points. The first point is that. The medical establishment, doctors as well as chemists, acted in complicity with the colonial institution. Either they stopped the supply of uh, drugs, or they basically, either they were involved in torture cases, or they acted in complicity, you know, uh, they, in complicity in that they basically kind of, they did not want to kind of you know, report torture cases. And th th these are the two points that he raises in that discussion. But he makes a reference. He says the doctor has always been uh, um, seen like the teacher, like the policeman, like uh, the, the army. And I find that really quite odd. And that basically sent me to do the research that I'm going to be presenting you today. Um, and there's an excellent book written by... Um, um, Patricia Lawson, 
really fantastic. She talks about you know, kind of, uh, the, compl the complicity of the academia, uh, complicity of academia, and uh, uh, scholarship and the military in the colonization of Algeria. Uh, when Algeria was colonized, 176 surgeons accompanied the army which con conquered Algeria in 1830, and these surgeons played a key role in France's so-called civilizing mission. One of the surgeons was uh, Dr. Baudens. He wrote Relation de l'Expedition de Constantine. And in that book, he provides a taxonomy of Algerian society classifying it, its ethnicity into five distinct groups. He outlines a negative uh, portrait of uh, the Arab as lazy, thieving, and violent. And I'm going to be here talking about the construction of uh, 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 um, uh, the uh, uh, Arab Algerian or the indigenous Algerian, how that construction in a kind of influenced Fanon's reading of, uh, uh, or critique of uh, the, school of, uh, the School of Algiers. And I really want to conclude with that, yeah? So, like uh, uh, Baudin's, Baudigeon is another one. In his Considération sur l'Algérie, he establishes a correlation between the physiognomy of the Arabs and their moral characteristics. For Baudigeon, the Arabs as a race, they are lazy, they indulge in vices, and these vices are determined by climactic and hereditary factors. He opposes civilization to uh, bar uh, barbarity, arguing that the Arabs, because of their religion and ethnicity, are beyond the bounds of uh, civilization. And these doctors were mobilized to determine the viability of the colonial project, because they were part of the military personnel as well. And they tried to uh, uh, um, determine whether the French could settle in Algeria because of uh, the climactic conditions, but also because of the, uh, uh, the diseases that they encountered. Baudigeon was of the view that the, the climate was an important factor in determining uh, uh, race, and that the idea of race is uh, linked to the moral hygiene of uh, the indigenous people. He establishes a clear correlation between race and disease, and, con and the containment of uh, the latter, that is to say disease, serves only to maintain a cordon sanitaire, between the Europeans and the Arabs, and also to establish a hierarchy subordinating inferior races, like the Arabs, to the agents of civilization and progress. The third doctor that I really want to talk about is Auguste Varnier. Um, Varnier, uh, um, was also a military surgeon. He arrived in Algeria two years after its colonialization. But in the 1860s, he abandoned uh, his... Uh, um, he was part of Saint... Saint, Saint uh, he was a Saint, Saint Simonian. He abandoned the movement and also he abandoned the army and joined the colonial administration. And I think, you know, uh, uh, Varnier was instrumental in the, uh, uh, um, the, in the colonialization of Algeria. And uh, Fanon's critique uh, at the end of the Wretched of the Earth must be understood in the context of uh, two laws which he implemented, uh, Varnier. Uh, the first law, La Loi Varnier, which was uh, passed in 1873. This law, in fact, um, reproduced uh, uh, another piece of legislation which was passed by the, the French. Le Senatus consult 
of uh, 1863. There was also uh, another law, the Senatus Consult of 65. And these two laws, in fact, worked in, in tandem to assimilate an Algeria voided of the historical subject. The first law aimed to catalogue the property. In fact, it, it aimed to assimilate the colonial property to the exclusion of the colonial subject. But it's to say, let me put it bluntly, it was to dispossess the natives. The second one um, worked to um, assimilate or naturalize the indigenous people, provided they relinquish their Islamic status. You need to relinquish your Islamic status in order to assimilate. So basically, Islam and disease became, you know, I want to establish this link because. Even Body Shaw, in, uh, in, his, uh, uh, in his writing, as he was making pronouncements on the moral uh, hygiene of the Algerian people, he was also arguing for the impl implementation of, the, uh, uh, of uh, um, um, individual property. Before these two laws, there were three types of properties. There was the hus, run by the relig religious foundations. There was the ash land which belongs belong to the extended tribe. The, also there is milk, which is individual property. But the individual property was, was same. People, the, the, you know, kind of, you know, the structure of the family wasn't basically kind of, you know, the way we understand the family structure. The family refers to the extended family, the harsh. And French colonialism aimed to break down you know, kind of, you know, the social structures did possess the Al Algerian and um, promote colonial settlements. In fact, if you want to understand that colonialism is, is a system, you need to come back to this point in history to understand the impact of colonialism on Algerian society, which basically uh, 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 of analyzing case studies in the Italian colonialism. Yeah, but today I'm focusing on on on, on medicine. Um, so there we go. Okay, so you know, kind of, you know, we hear in the uh, 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 study in Italian colonialism, Fano makes pronouncements like this: medical technology is beneficial. But the colonial, the colonial situation was such that the colonized perceived its attributes negatively. Because colonial ideology permeates every aspect of colonial society, including the medical establishment. Like the, the institution of language or the radio, you know, this establishment was marked by the dimension of colonial history and ideology. Colonial technology was not neutral. It was used as a means to an end in the justification of uh, French colonialism. This is why, and I quote Fanon, the colonist perceives the doctor, the engineer, the school teacher, the policeman, the, ro the rural constable through the, haze, through the haze of an organic confusion. He sees them all the same because they are agents of co co colonial endeavor. Um, okay, that's what the, the first part of my my talk. I try to be as uh, as as as, uh, as quickly as possible to. Uh, like I, I want a, a discussion. Um, the second point I'm going to, to focus nice focus on uh, um, psychiatry. Fanon's psychiatry was bound with his politics. I agree with the Vergès on this point. It was determined by the dimension of colonialism, French colonialism. So Vergès is absolutely right to situate his critique, his critique of uh, the Alger school at the, at the end of uh, the Wretched of the Earth in a context where psychiatric practice colluded with colonialism. But it's important to outline the contours of this context. Uh, two trends dominated colonial psychiatry. The first was influenced by uh, 
Moreau de la Tour in his uh, uh, um, well-known piece, Recherche sur les Aliénés en Orient. So what does Moreau... Uh, t- uh, no. That's the first trend, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going fast. The second was marred by what is called the excessive psychiatrization of uh, the Arab Muslims. Um, these two trends are not conceptually apart. In fact, they converge in an, uh, 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 in an ethnocentric discourse which define, defines the, uh, this quasi-scientific language of colonial psychiatry. But there, there seems to be a seamless line connecting in a kind of, you know, Moro to Boisier uh, to uh, uh, Poirot that Fanon analyzes in uh, The Wretched of the Earth. Um, and to be honest with you, it's, it's not only a seamless line connecting these, these three psychiatric doctors the same kind of, you know, line connect the you know, kind of, you know, the kind of, you know, the, 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 these doctors as well, because they they hold the same conception of uh, the, uh, uh, the same stereotype of the of the uh, um, uh, Arab Muslim. Um, but it, this uh, a seamless line of thought stretches from Moro to Bois to Boisier, uh, to Poirot, um, giving rise to an epistemology which was ostensibly informed by crude orientalizing stereotypes, by colonial prejudice, by racism, by social cultural Darwinism, and evolutionary theory. It is nonetheless instructive to nuance the differences in this train of thought. In 18... 43, 13 years of, after the colonization of Algeria, Moreau de, la Tour, uh, Moreau de Tour, sorry, sorry, published an article entitled Recherche sur les Alignés, setting a trend in psychiatry that attempted to establish a correlation between civilization and madness. And this is his line of argument. Due to cultural and climactic conditions, Alienation, that is to say madness, was understood to be less frequent in the Orient than in the West. You say, hey, the Arabs are not crazy. But he goes on to to say, in Islamic societies, those who suffer from... uh, Sorry. um, uh, No, sorry, I I will come back to uh, the the, the point opposing that. In Islamic society, those who suffer from mental disorder were not alienated, but kept in the community. Moro characterized Muslim people by their dogmatic thinking, fatalism, submission to absolutism, moral resignation, weakness, by their free care attitudes, and by addiction to uh, drugs. But also, you know, kind of, you know, there is also kind of, you know, uh, the, all of these doctors and psychiatric uh, psych- uh, psych- doctors as well are making you know, kind of, you know, the argument that the, the Muslims are um, um, perverse sexually. But they kind of, you know, sodomy is something that is, uh, uh, Islam encourages, that uh, 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 um, Muslims are oversexed, that they are bestial. And so forth, so forth, and so on. And you find, you know, kind of, you know, this line of argument, you know, kind of, you know, represented in Gide the Moralist. Gide, when he goes to Algeria, he, he contracts homosexuality because of it's the climate. He gets it when he gets there. It's not his fault. He doesn't have any agency. He gets basically there. He gets, you know, he becomes homosexual. Um, and you know, kind of, you know, the, the same you know, stereotype is uh, is central to, it, you know, for example, in mythology. You know, kind of, you know, the, the Arabs are criminals or they are prostitutes. Yeah, and the climate, you know, you know, acts negatively on Merso. You know, kind of, you know, things happen because the, 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 it's the, 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 this violent climate. You know, kind of, you know, you know, kind of, you know, 
uh, impacts on his uh, subjectivity. But th that's a completely different discussion, you know, if you want to engage with that. But, you know, it's quite interesting to kind of, you know, you know bring, you know, kind of, you know, the, these uh, ideas together. So, you know, this is, you know, he said, well, the Muslims are, are not, are not, are not uh, 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 crazy because madness is, uh, is uh, uh, um, the work of cogitation. Um, you know, those who can think can get crazy. Yeah? And you could, you could see kind of, you know, how he sets the opposition between, you know, kind of, you know, the West, you know, and the rest that are, you know, kind of, you know, uh, the rest and the, uh, the West and the rest, you know. So his conception of colonial psych uh, psychiatry was governed by a duality which opposes the West and Islam, progress and stasis, civilization and madness. Yeah? Um, Boger takes his theory and he puts it on his, his head. He says, well, no, 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 no. You know, the Muslims, you know, they are not immune from insanity. They are crazy. In fact, is, uh, uh, Islam exacerbates fanaticism and m mental disorder. They are crazy, you know? Um, all right, really, I really want to kind of, you know... Um, uh, I could you know, say a little bit more if you want me, or basically you know, cut to the chase and get you know, to basically my reading of uh, of uh, Fanon, how he basically he, he reacts to uh, Saint Ali up to you. Yeah. Okay. Good. So dogmatic thinking, fanaticism, apathy, moral resignation were not features of Islam per se, but of its political decline and its colonization. It is significant to note that Moro's orientalizing views obfuscate the fact that from the 8th to the, 9th, uh, to the 13th century, Islamic medicine made great strides with contributions from Razi, Abu Sina, and Abu Rushd. Abu Rushd was also a great philosopher. He basically was, he, he translated Aristotle. Um, so the asylum... The asylum was an invention which came about as a result of this progress in medicine and the establishment of the first Moristan. Moristan is a term for the asylum. The first Moristan was established in, uh, in uh, um, I think, in Egypt. Some people pronounce it without the A. The first Moristan was established in 1216, a hospice where those suffering from mental disorders were treated. However, the decline of Islamic civilization brought about belief in superstition. As Jean-Michel uh, 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 Biguet points out, Algeria was colonized in 1830, the mentally ill and the needy were cared for in charitable institutions affiliated to the mosque and run by the Habus. Do you remember the three types of property? You know, the Arsh, Habus, and individual property? So the Habus contributed you know, to the mental, uh, to the welfare of the needy and those who were mentally uh, uh, ill. But with the Lalwa Varnier, the Habus the land from the was, was, uh, was taken, and there was no support for the mentally, uh, for the mentally ill. Um, so as early as 1845, an agreement was made between uh, Algiers and the asylum of Marseille, and subsequent conventions were signed with Nice, uh, saint Alban, where Fanon was trained as a psychiatric doctor, to provide care for the mentally ill. And the referral of patients from Algeria to these hospitals lasted for a century. So basically, no, uh, 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 the French never cared to build a, an institution to care for the mentally ill. The conditions in which these patients were, were kept before transferral to France reminded one of a prison and not a hospital. And this continued for a, a, a century. Um, Treatment was tantamount to punishment. The referral to France was experienced as a sort of exile and forced separation from, from their families. 
And I think it, all of this practice went against psycho, uh, psychotherapy uh, practice by, 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 by Fano. Which we, it went completely against Dr. Scales' uh, philosophy. Um, but the 1912 Tunis conference, things changed. There were two proposals to build a hosp uh, an asylum in Morocco, and then also another proposal to build a, uh, um, an asylum in Tunis. And it was the Manuba, the Manuba uh, Hospital. And Fanon practiced in Manuba. Uh, uh, after he was uh, expelled from uh, from Algeria, um, but it took more than two decades after the Tunis Congress to put in place care provision for patients in Algeria. It was uh, Violet, the Governor General, that gave the green light for the development of uh, 15 bed ward in um, in Blida where Fano would, would be appointed as chef de service in 1953. But these wards remained empty till 1933. In November 1927, Poirot was appointed as psychiatric, psychiatric advisor to the, uh, um, um, bio, uh, to the uh, uh, administration of, of Violette. It is crucial to point out that the infrastructural reforms, as, a, as represented by the uh, Bleeder Hospital, the symbol of colonial modernity, were lagging behind the theory of Poirot and his team at the Ecole d'Alger, the School of uh, Algiers. The, kind of thing, the symbol, uh, uh, Bleeder, symbol of modernity, but the theory that they were, practiced, what they were practicing was a 19th century theory informed by the body of thought of all of these people. Um, so his theory was informed by 19th century ethno, uh, ethno-psychiatry. And one of its uh, main uh, 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 preoccupations was the, the other, as, or the, the foreign other, as alien in the sense of un uncanny strange, weird, and mad. This dubious uh, uh, research in psychiatry must be reinscribed within an orientalist discourse inside its sense of the term as an epistemology, but also as a corporate institution that worked to legitimize colonialism. Yeah, they, these the, the, the doctor, the, the doctors, these psychiatric uh, doctors as well, work to kind of you know, medicalize, but also psychologize the, 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 the Arab and Colonize as well. Um, and I'm going to stop there and basically, you know, kind of, you know, focus now on uh, 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 the theory of uh, Pahu. Pahu thought that the Algerian was a lobotomized European. Um, he doesn't have the, fac the, the faculty of cogitation thought. Um, he describes that actually he was treating the kind of, you know, with imagine Poirot and these the, the doctors in a kind of, you know, um, violent patients. Um, and the view was the Algerian is inherently violent. Um, and this violence is basically because of uh, uh, of uh, it, it, it's something inherent. He describes the, the Algerian as a lobotomized or uh, a European or uh, um, incapable of the process of introspection, cannot turn into himself to think. Yeah. The art cannot turn into himself. He cannot practice melancholia. So the art is a pseudo-melancholic. And a pseudo-melancholic because he doesn't turn into himself. He turns against others. And, you know, kind of, you know, destroys others. This melancholy is turning into 
into oneself. And the process of melancholia is a process that could lead to suicide, the destruction of self. In the case of the Algerian, he turns against, against, against others. And Fanon was absolutely furious. Absolutely furious. He argues, you know, that the Algerian is very close. You know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, the Algerian, if the Algerian is violent, you need to go back, you know, to the kind of, you know, the colonialism. Colonialism produced, you know, this violence. Um, and basically, he, uh, I think, you know, he makes a reference to Oral when uh, he was in Oral in the Second World War. The Algerians were in a state of, in the grip of a famine. In the grip of famine. Um, and the French soldiers were throwing the you know, crumbs of bread, uh, crumbs of bread, and the Algerians were fighting over these uh, 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 these, these crumbs. Um, and he argues that colonialism uh, reduced. Uh, um, Algeria into a farm. And this farm is uh, ruled by the packing order. The stronger gets stronger, and the weaker gets weaker. And the stronger her is going to go on all the grain. Now, Roland Barthes wrote a fantastic piece in uh, myth -myth mythology, and then this piece called I think it's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, Myth today is a fantastic piece, but I like this one. It's good. He talks about bread and wine. I published two or three years ago uh, uh, another piece. It's called milk. Uh, uh, it's not called uh, uh, um, bread, bread uh, um, milk and wine. It's called bread, milk, bread and, and wine. When the, when the French took the land from the, uh, from the Algerians, they promoted settlements, but also they promoted the cultivation of uh, 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 viticulture. They promoted viticulture. Land which used to produce wheat is not producing wheat any longer. You know, Algeria was colonized. Why was Algeria colonized? Algeria was the first country to recognize the Republic. When France was in the grip of famine during the Revolution, Algeria was the first country to support France. And it's over this, the, the, the settlement of the debt that the French colonized Algeria. After the introduction of the Sinatis Pursuit, Algeria was in the grip of famine from you know, kind of, you know, the 1860s up to the 1960s. Algeria was in the grip of famine. And Fanon makes the point eloquently. It's basically the colonial system that has produced this violence. And implicitly, as, as well as explicitly, you could argue that uh, the peace uh, uh, the, the piece you know, kind of, you know, is a critique of you know, kind of, you know, the, the, uh, 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 um, the implication of, uh, of the laws which were passed in Algeria, especially by, uh, by one. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Thank you.